Okay, hello everybody. We are going to look into using Orc framework for Unity 5.6. This tutorial that we're about to do is going to cover everything. All of the written steps that you would normally find on the Orc framework website. So let's go ahead and check that out. So if I go to orcframework.com, then I get these options. I can go to the tutorials. And for that, I have how to use game tutorials and gameplay tutorials. Now, if you just bought this product or you're even using the trial, you might think to yourself, I don't know where to start. And I felt like that. Um, and it's what prompted me to want to make the video series because I thought it would be really helpful to have a visual aid. So we're going to not do how to's and gameplay tutorials for this uh, session or we might do those down the road, but we're going to stick with the just the gameplay tutorial. Of those, we have 50 some videos, so you can see everything that we're going to be looking at. And it will make you be able to make a game from start to finish using Orc and Unity, and again, using 5.6 for right now. Okay, so getting started, the first thing that you should do is you can download the trial from the website um, where it says get work. So I will assume that you know how to download something. And you go and unzip that into your downloads folder. Just hold off and then open Unity up and start a blank project. Um, and what you do after is you're going to download resources. These are the resources for the tutorial. After you download those, they are going to appear as game tutorial resources dot tar. At least it was for me. Now, it needs to be a dot unity package in order to download or in order to import into unity. So I went ahead and I changed the, the dot tar into a dot unity package. So I just changed it and it turned into this with a little unity box and I was able to import it into unity. So just to kind of keep things flowing here and get this tutorial so we don't waste a lot of time, I wanted to just say I went ahead and imported everything. And by everything, I mean I went to, there's only two things that you need to import. You go to import custom package, and then you're going to go in and import the orc framework. You could have done the trial. Go ahead and import the trial. It's a package. And then after you do that, after it imports, you go ahead and import the game resources for the tutorial. So game tutorial resources dot unity package. Once that's done, you're going to have something looks a lot like my unity. I did change the default layout like this. So we're just going to have uh, the standard assets tutorial resources and the work framework. The next thing that you need to do is go to the build settings. From the build settings, you need to go to, to the tutorial resources, scenes, and these are the scenes that come in the resources package. There's five, uh, five of them. Just go ahead and put them in the build settings. And then once you see them up here, click out of here. The next thing that you're going to need to do is you need to go to the Windows tab in Unity. And you'll see that Orc Framework has two windows. It comes with two windows. You just need to dock them. So here's the first one. This is the editor window. You're going to be using this a lot. Um, and we're going to go over the editor window later on. And then the scene wizard window. OK, so these two. I docked them up here. Doesn't matter. So the next thing that you need to do after you've done the build settings and Dr. Windows is make sure that you head on over to the main menu and that it is in your window here. You can see the scene that you're working in. Okay, it just has the main camera. So if you are thinking to yourself, I'm going to make a custom scene and it's going to be called whatever, it doesn't necessarily matter, but this is going to be the scene that we launch the game from. So I highly, again, encourage you to just follow the tutorial without straying off and that will become abundantly clear to you as you complete the series. From the scene wizard, 
you're going to add a game starter. Being in the main menu scene, from the scene wizard, add a game starter. You actually need to confirm that the second click. You'll see that the game starter pops in to your field. I went ahead and click call main menu, and that's going to make it so you can launch the game and have visual feedback to click on a new game. So that's what the work game starter actually does for you. Go ahead and save the scene, save the project, and if I do happen to push play from here, really there's not going to be anything that happens other than we're going to go ahead and see it says new game, exit, that's it. Now, I actually just followed what was the tutorial. I followed the very first one. It tells you how to download, how to add scenes to the build, import the framework, and using the scene wizard, and then going ahead and adding the game starter. So we did that. That was that was tutorial one. Now, I'm going to just keep on moving through the tutorials and following them in the order that they come. If you do want to follow with me, remember tutorials from Work Frameworks homepage game tutorials, I click learn more, and then it has an order, everything. So we were on the first one, setting up the project. We're going to move on now to the very second one. I'm going to go ahead and put this over my other window, but again, if you want to keep it up, it's not necessary, but it was just a good resource to have if you decide to do it yourself later. I just want to read. It's very in depth, but sometimes I found that I could have really used some nice visual aid as I was reading because the components can be a little bit overwhelming in the editor window. So, if we do follow the tutorial, what it tells us to do is setting your main menu up because it says it's the starting point for every test we'll run, and that's why we're doing it. So we're going to start by going to Windows. So we're going to actually be using um, not Unity's UI. We're going to use the UI that comes with Fork. It actually makes things a little bit easier, especially when you're just starting out. OK, I'm going to give you an early tip. One thing that you're going to notice that I really want to stop going over um, so that you don't feel overwhelmed is the, the layout isn't exactly easy to discern what's happening and what you need to do and where you need to go. And when you're following the tutorial, sometimes it's even less clear. So I found this out on my own. I like to kind of close the windows, just quick close, um, because it's easier to see what heading you need when you're following tutorials, either with me or on your own. And when you do some of those other how-tos, it's easier to follow the instructions if you can see where they're coming from. So we're going to be navigating to the menu section and open up menu settings subsection. I'll open this for now. So we're going to keep legacy GUI and we're going to change the base skin. Here it is in the default GUI box. Base skin, select the choice. We're using a legacy type GUI system and we're going to use these resources that came with the Unity package for the tutorial. We're also going to use some of the audio clips that came with the tutorial. For cursor move, we're going to do cursor. Uh, accept is going to be accept. Cancel. Cancel. Fail. Ability level change. Cursor 1. And user change. We'll do accept. And, and that's it. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our GUI box. So we're going to change the name of this. Main menu. This is where I get a little bit different. I like to know that I'm working with a GUI box. 
part, maybe a gooey box. Mostly because where there's a couple other things that have a new main menu, and it's just kind of a good organize, organization strategy that I have. Um, I click limit screen. All right, height adjustment is going to be auto. Content box settings. All right, we'll go ahead and use the default ones. I found that other settings, depending on the size of the game that you want, I found other settings to be a little bit better for me, for the place that I wanted. But since we are again following that tutorial, we're not experimenting right now. So now what we're going to do, after we've done that, and this is why it can be a little bit confusing, things aren't named always with the structured logic that you might follow when you're doing Unity. Let's just close this for a second. So there were the menu settings, and you can see there's a lot of different options that you're going to be exploring later, and we set up GUI boxes, okay? So those are going to be our visual feedback. Now we're going to go where it says main menu. Exactly what this is, is I'm the way I guess I would describe it is it's just choices that you'll have in the main menu. So these are going to be things like your new game settings, and the base settings that you have that's associated with the main menu itself. That's why I guess it makes sense to think of this as like the place that you can go to specifically tweak your main menu. We're going to just be calling. This is some place to call the main menu. So we're going to just type it by name because if you remember correctly, that was the name of the scene. Remember those scenes? The scenes. Zero for main menu, one town. Two field, three game over, four battle arena. Ugh, auto call. Okay, so new game settings. The new game scene. So this is going to be Z one town. So um, again, going back to the scene, you could see that main menu was supposed to be first. The intended order, I think, of this tutorial expects that town is going to be your first level. So we're going to go ahead and go right into that from, you know, the main menu. Menu options. So we have the main menu GUI box, where it says main menu options GUI box. So in the menu options, we have some options here. And there's some options for buttons, changing the text, changing the color. Here we can change the name that it's called New Game. And that also changes the output so that if I were to say, you know, if I were to call this just like start, it would show start. But it's going to say New Game. Next is going to be the load button. And we're just going to keep it to saying load game. The settings that are by default the language, we're going to be doing this tutorial in English, so we don't necessarily need a language button in the game because the game is also going to be in English. You know, options and about, and then the exit button. So now that we've done these things, we are going to save the settings. And we are going to test, we're going to redock this, and we're going to do a little test here, see how it looks. Okay, so this is what scene one actually does look like. So successfully went from the main menu to the scene. Okay. In the next video, we are going to go ahead and cover the next steps, which is going to be adding the player.